scientists and health professionals have advised us to do now in the midst of the outbreak of this global pandemic. As the national chief imam told us during his press conference on Monday, Islam is a religion of flexibility which allows us to tilt with our normal practices in certain extreme situations where health, life, and safety of humanity are concerned. Your eminence and fellow Muslims, we are not alone in this unprecedented situation. Many countries around the world have taken similar preventative measures, measures of suspending daily congregational and Juma prayers to help curb the spread of the virus. Countries such as Turkey, Egypt, Kuwait, Iran, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and so on, have all ordered the suspension of congregational prayers in mosques. Saudi Arabia in particular has suspended Umrah and is allowing controlled prayers only at the well-guarded two holy mosques in Mecca and Medina. The threat of the coronavirus is real and the suspension of congregational prayers are serious steps taken by Ghana and all these countries to protect people. During this temporary period of not being able to converge at mosques for the prayers and also listen to the weekly Friday khutbah, I would like to suggest an innovative way of delivering weekly sermons through social media to homes in the country by imams and mosques which have the capacity to do so. I'm happy that the Ghana Police Mosque has announced its intention to deliver live Friday sermons through Facebook to its congregants and Muslims in general during this temporary suspension of congregational prayers. The khutbah is a most important aspect of our Jummah prayers and a real source of weekly inspiration to Muslims. So I would like to encourage imams and mosques across the country to consider this online innovation. While we observe our daily prayers at home and supplicate to Allah to save us from the coronavirus, it is essential we continue to strictly observe the preventive measures that have been announced to help keep everyone safe. Covering our mouths when coughing and sneezing, as well as washing our hands regularly with soap and the running water are some of the preventive steps we should continuously adhere to. It is also important for all Muslims to thoroughly wash our hands with soap and the running water to ensure our hands are clean before we start ablution. As the government continues to take bold steps to curb the spread, and the citizens are encouraged to strictly observe these preventive measures to protect us from contracting and further spreading the virus, inshallah, I wish to urge our eminent imams to continue to pray for our dear nation, Ghana, and the world. We have unwavering belief in the Almighty Allah that he has what it takes to save us and the, word from, and the world from this affliction. As Allah himself says in the Holy Quran, chapter 6, verse 17, and if Allah should touch you with adversity, there is no remover of it except him. And if he touches you with good, then he is over all things competent, end quote. So it is to Allah that we turn in this time of adversity. There is no other but him. Some will ask, why are you resorting to prayer as a government? Indeed. The circumstances surrounding the revelation of one of the most important 
surahs in the Quran, Surah to the class, was when the non-believers asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They asked him about God. Describe your God to us, they said. In reply, the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this surah. And this surah, surah to Ikhlas, serves as the identity card of God. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Kul wallahu ahad Allahu samad lam yulid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. That is one of the shortest verses in the Quran but one of the most powerful. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Say, he is Allah the one, Allah the eternally besought of all. He begetteth, begetteth not, not, nor has begotten, and there is none comparable unto him. It is a short verse, as he said, but we are told that its power is equivalent to one third of the Quran, one third of the Holy Quran, one third of the Injil, which is the Bible, the one third of the Torah, which was given to Moses. Very, very important. That is, he is one and has no substitute. No, he has neither similitude or equal. He has limbs, no limbs or parts. Allahu Samad, he's impenetrable indestructible, unchangeable. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He is the creator of all things, of all beings. His work is not reproduction or reproducing himself. It is instead bringing something into being from non-being. Wa lam yakun lahu kufuan ahad. He has no equal in being. Perfection and action. He is one, and no one is similar to him. He is the one and only. Ya Allah, iyaka na abudu wa iyaka na stain. It is indeed, it is you we worship, and it is you we ask for help. In this time of the corona, coronavirus, this is why we are turning to Allah. And this is why we are having this prayer meeting today, because we know that Allah can help us, relieve us from this adversity. May the Almighty Allah have mercy on us and save us from this coronavirus malady. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Vice President. I'll now ask Sheikh Armiyao Shaibu to deliver the opening ceremony. Topic, thee do we worship and thee do we beseech for help. Quran chapter one, verse five. Shake. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. We give him thanks and praises. We are in his name. He is good and holy in fullness and perfection. We ask Allah to bestow his peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad and indeed all the prophets and all, all those who turn on the path of righteousness to the day of judgment. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Al Hajj Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Your Eminence, the National Chief Imam. Your Eminence, the heads of the various sects here and present, respected members of parliament, senior staff of government, the media. I want to begin by greeting you all with Islamic greetings of love, peace, and fraternity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, 
in the prayers that has already been said and in the opening remarks of His Excellency the Vice President, the tone has been set for this the brief sermon I have been asked to present. The coronavirus is spreading across the world without any respect for geographical boundaries. The whole of the world has virtually come under siege. And under the circumstance, nations that pride themselves with the most advanced and excellent scientific and technological advancements have virtually been brought to their knees. What does this tell us? And Ghana has also had its fair share of the spread. From the beginning, we thought, like some people have said, God, Allah, is a spread of this. So from zero, we registered the first two. From the first two, in my estimation, I thought that just by simple mathematical consideration, we should go to four before. But we jumped from two to six. What it meant to me was that the spread, the rate of spread was getting exponential. From six, we got to seven. And by the time we are taking the next speech by the president, His Excellency, we are talking about nine. And then we have now been told the next two have added, and we are at 11. From 11, where do we get to? So in this state of anxiety and worry and fear about a disease that is strengthening, that is threatening our existential survival in the world, and science is at its wit's end, now we have come to realization that there is a certain power that we must all bow down to. And that is why I think it's apt that the choice for the theme for this meeting this morning is excellent and well thought through. And we found no text to use except from the Quran chapter 1, verse 5, which His Excellency the Vice President excellently and eloquently remarked on. Lord, you alone do we worship. And for those of you who understand Arabic, you can understand why the prefix Iyaka was used. Iyaka na'abud wa Iyaka nasta'in. It could have been na'abuduka. We worship you. But the prefix, the expression with Iyaka na'abud is to emphasize that in this particular circumstance, you alone, so we exclusively distinguish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our worship. Before him, we make a declaration. We make a declaration, an acknowledgement of his absolute lordship and control of our affairs. And indeed, transcendental as he is in his control of our affairs, he is imminent to us. In his imminence, we experience him in the world of man through his beneficence and his munificence. And that's why we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaf'alu ma yasha'u bi qudratih wa yahkumu ma yasha'u bi izzatih. He does what he wills with his power. And he determines whatever he wills with his might. And he has power over everything in our lives. And because of these attributes that he is most deserving of our obeisance, and that's why we make a declaration of our loyalty to him when every day in our son of Fatiha, we say, Iyaka na'abud wa Iyaka nasta'in. We come to him with our obeisance, declaring 
our helplessness and declaring our complete nothingness as we declare his magnificence in the power that he used to follow.